All right, my first guest today is C. Mark Smith, but today I'm going to call you Mark. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, well, I want you to bring the microphone over there so that we can talk into Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. All right, and Mark is the author of Community Godfather, How Sam Volpentest Shaped the History of Hanford and the Tri-Cities. Wow, and it is a huge, huge book. How did you decide to write this book? Well, thanks, thanks for letting me uh, back on your show, Christine. It's good <laughs> to see you again. Uh, I think uh, basically I wrote, I wrote the book because uh, it needed to be written. I, I think it's important that we understand uh, where we came from and how we got here. And one of the uh, uh, major uh, uh, implementers of our local history was a guy by the name of Sam Volpentest who uh, uh, was the godfather of the Tri-Cities and uh, depending on who you uh, talk to uh, brought uh, millions or tens or hundreds of millions of dollars over a 65 year period into the Tri-Cities and helped uh, set the gr economic development groundwork for the community that we are today. Well, you have a, quite a history yourself of economic development. That, I would have to say, is your professional background. Is that, is that fair, sure. Mark? And since you have retired from that, you have uh, been an author. This is actually your second book. Tell us your first book. The uh, first book uh, was a, uh, a biography of a, uh, a U.S. Senator from Washington State that most people have never heard of, uh, a guy by the name of Harry Kane, who uh, became uh, uh, he was elected to the U.S. Senate in 1946 and served one term uh, uh, before uh, he lost to Henry Jackson in 1952. Uh, but Kane uh, had been uh, mayor, elected mayor of Tacoma in 19, uh, when he was uh, 32 years old, 1939. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Re-elected again in 1942 by the highest plurality in, on, on record, including up to and today. Uh, and then uh, served a term in the Senate and then was appointed to the Subversive Activities Control Board under President uh, Eisenhower. And the important part about Harry's legacy uh, is that he's the guy that got rid of the loyalty oath uh, during the, uh, at the end of the McCarthy era. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Truman and Eisenhower administrations had what they called a loyalty security program where teachers and government employees and uh, a lot of other Americans had to swear that they didn't belong to a lot of uh, organizations, oh. and, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people were, were uh, uh, inaccurately accused of either socialist or other kinds of uh, leanings, uh, homosexual and other mm -hmm. kinds of things, and lost their jobs during those, uh, those years. Harry went public uh, uh, against the uh, program in the Eisenhower administration, lost his job, doing it, but uh, ended uh, the loyalty oath as we know it today, and it was finally uh, then struck down by the Supreme Court. So you like to find the interesting characters, don't you? So you titled this book Community Godfather. I think about the word Godfather, and I think about a protector, a decision maker, somebody who's like my way or the highway. What was Sam Volpentest's personality like? Well, the, the term is, is actually a double entendre. Uh, because uh, Volpentest uh, uh, is kind of a, a nondescript name, but, he's, but Sam's real last name was Volpentesta. Uh, so there's, he, he was the son of Italian immigrants, uh, so the godfather has, uh, has, a, has a double meaning in this sense. But he's also the godfather in the, in the sense that uh, uh, Sam uh, uh, actually created Tridec, uh, and uh, was its uh, was its uh, and, and and an organization that preceded Tridec called Tritnik, uh, uh, and uh, and Sam was really the uh, the first major economic developer that we had in the Tri Cities, and then uh, made sure that uh, when they closed to, when they shut started to shut down the plutonium reactors uh, that. Uh, uh, the Tri-Cities had an economic development future after uh, that huge recession that we had uh, as a result of the decision to shut down the reactors in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what is kind of interesting about Sam Volpentest is that he seemed to know how to use 
important people to get what he wanted. I mean, there was story after story. There are names, Magnuson and all of the governors of Washington, uh, Norm Dix. I mean, the list is really long. Senator Murray, Cantwell, people that he went to over and over again, and they knew him, seemed to have a great deal of respect for him. You know, I wish that you would tell your story of your first meeting with him because I think it's really interesting. It's funny. Well, in a, in a previous life, I was uh, the uh, regional director of the Federal Economic Development Administration for the eight western states, and I was appointed to that job in 1970. And uh, I was uh, 32 years old. And I'd been at my office in Seattle. Uh, the, the office was in Seattle instead of San Francisco because of Warren Magnuson. Uh, and uh, I'd, been, uh, I'd been there about a week, didn't really know where the men's room was yet. And uh, my secretary every morning gave me a little three by five card of who I was supposed to call and what the appointments were. And I noticed that nine o'clock, uh, first thing in the morning, was a uh, Sam Volpen test. And I asked her, uh, who is Sam Volpen test? And she said, I don't know except that Senator Magnuson's office made the appointment. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's, uh, that's interesting, because I was a Republican appointee at the time. And, uh, and uh, so uh, 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 9 o'clock comes wrong, and this little uh, guy comes into my office, uh, about 5 foot 4, uh, looks kind of like a cross between a, a leprechaun and a Jewish rabbi. Jeez. Uh, and and uh, <laughs> uh, we shake hands and he sit down and exchange pleasantries and and uh, a few minutes uh, later he reaches in his uh, suit pocket and pulls out a piece of paper with a list of projects on it that he thought I would like to fund in the Tri Cities and so he went through each of those and gave me the rationale as to why uh, we'd like to spend the taxpayers' dollars on that project and. Uh, I'd been, as I say, I'd been there about a week. I wasn't going to commit to anything. Uh, and uh, so we nodded and smiled and we shook hands and he left. And about 20 minutes later, the telephone rang and it was my secretary and uh, she said, uh, it's Senator Magnuson on the telephone himself. And I'd never talked to Senator Magnuson except that I'd voted against him every opportunity I'd had. And uh, uh, so uh, I lift up the uh, lift up the receiver and said, good morning, sir, what can I do for you? And he said, I understand you just had Sam open test in your office. And I said, yes, sir. And there was a pause. Give him anything he wants. Click. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah. I just, it's a beautiful illustration. Wow. Sam, uh, <laughs> I, 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 learned, I learned when I wrote this book that there was some history behind that. Uh, uh, Sam grew up in, in Seattle, uh, first son of uh, Italian immigrants, uh, very, uh, very poor. Uh, his uh, father was a boot black, his mother was a laundress. Uh, he started to work at 10 uh, to help raise money for the family uh, and then started full time working at 17 uh, and uh, went to work for a large uh, wholesale grocery chain in Seattle and, and uh, uh, ended up uh, being a star salesman for them and he had a grocery route of, of speakeasies and Italian grocery stores and after hours places uh, all around downtown Seattle and so he got to know everybody and he became a really good salesman. He was their star salesman selling canned coffee and tin beans and, and all of this stuff. and, and uh, so in the, it turned, uh, and he and he made a good living at it, and it turns out in 1938 he was elected president uh, of the Italian Club in Seattle, which is a, a large uh, downtown club with an excellent dining room and a convivial bar, and all the local politicians used to stop in looking for votes and, and getting a getting a drink. And, uh, and, the, and when Sam was president of the Italian club, the vice president was a guy by the name of Albert Rossellini, mm -hmm. who became governor of Washington. Mm -hmm. and, an, and a young prosecuting attorney by the name of Warren Magnuson uh, used to come in and, and, uh, and have a drink in the afternoon. So, so uh, Sam knew Maggie, uh, knew uh, Al Rossellini from the early 30s, 
uh, got to know uh, Senator Jackson very well when Richland was looking to become, uh, you know, to incorporate in 1958 and, and get out from under the Atomic Energy Commission, and, and Senator Jackson was a proponent of that. So uh, Sam, knew, Sam knew powerful political figures, and, and he knew their staffs. And because he was an excellent salesman, he knew how to make his pitch, he knew what they wanted to hear, and he knew how to, he knew how to present it without taking more time of theirs than he needed to. Uh, Senator Murray uh, told me a story that uh, when she was first elected that he showed up at her door uh, when she came to work in the morning. He was standing there that, and he's, he's 93 at this point and uh, she's, uh, she's standing there and he said, no, no, you can't go in the office. Uh, before you go in the office you have to go down the hall to Senator so-and-so's room and uh, this uh, this legislation for Hanford's being marked up, and don't go, don't leave his office until you have his vote, and then you can come back and we'll talk. <laughs> and she said, I was more I, because of all the history uh, with uh, with uh, Scoop and Maggie and Norm Dix and all of the people that that Sam kn knew so well and worked with so closely. She said, I, ha I, was, I, was more I was more afraid of Sam than I was of the committee chairman. He told me I was gonna go down and talk to. He was incredible, that's for sure. I wanna take a break here, but when we come back, I wanna ask you, how does a man who moves to the Tri-Cities to open a tavern then become so incredibly significant in economic development? We're back in a moment. My guest today is C. Mark Smith, and his book is called Community Godfather, How Sam Bolton Tests Shaped the History of Hanford and the Tri-Cities. And you know what's interesting, Mark, is that in your book you talk about the fact that he came here to open a tavern, then opened multiple taverns. Then he proceeded to learn about Hanford inside and out to become a significant spokesperson for economic development and Hanford. Tell us some of the projects that he had his hand in that people today would recognize. I mean, obviously there's a bridge named after him, and there's a training center named after him. So we know of those two things. Yeah, uh, getting, back, getting back to the earlier part of your question, Christine, I, 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 he, he, uh, he, came, he came to uh, open a tavern. He had worked for uh, this uh, uh, wholesale uh, grocery chain for 20 years, left in... 1943, he was too old to go into the war, uh, and uh, and and kind of kicked around a little bit in Seattle, uh, trying some things. He came to the conclusion that he could never send his kids to the college that he had never been able to go to, unless he unless he worked for himself. And so he uh, he read a he read a blind ad in the Seattle Times, uh, put in uh, by. Uh, the Army when they were building the Uptown Shopping Center and they were looking for businesses that were only, uh, until they built the Uptown, there were only 32 businesses in Richland. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so uh, he came, to, uh, came, to, uh, came over, drove over on a hot Labor Day weekend uh, and went in and found out that the grocery store that he wanted to, uh, to open had been promised to somebody else, uh, but they had a tavern left. So he, uh, he said, well, okay, I'll take the tavern. So he opened the Uptown uh, Tavern, which uh, some of your listeners may know about, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, it was hot and the Hanford workers were thirsty and he was a good listener and he opened uh, six, seven more taverns. Uh, the, uh, the, the new Gaslight, which was Jackson's, uh, was one of Sam's at uh, one point. Uh, and, uh, and, and actually he got involved uh, he was just he was just happy to be a tavern owner making more money than he'd ever made. Uh, but he got involved out of self economic preservation. Uh, in it, he had been involved in the as I mentioned earlier with Senator Jackson and, and others uh, to try to get uh, the government to let the homeowners and the business owners in Richland. Uh, own their own businesses and and incorporate Richland into a city because at that point it was owned by the army, it was owned by the government, run by the government, with a you know with a security gate at the, uh, down where Columbia Point now is, and uh, so he 
he he he said, you know, we're never none of us business owners are ever going to be able to build our businesses in this community is never going to grow as long as it's owned by the government. So we've got to we've got to we've got to have our own destiny. And uh, so in 1958, they were successful in, in getting that. And uh, because of his efforts there, uh, he, he, had, he was named uh, as the chairman of the committee uh, that was uh, the, what they called the commencement committee to commence the new city. And, uh, and then he was elected uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, and he, uh, he's, he went to, there were about 30 members of the Chamber of Commerce. And he went to them and he said, now you, you know, we've got, a, we, we've, got a, we've got some goals. And the first goal is that we're going to get named an All-America City for our efforts in, in, in getting out from under the AEC. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to build a Hanford Highway and we're going to build a bridge across the Columbia River that will connect us to Spokane and, and Seattle. So we don't have to go up the windy two-lane Yakima Highway and it'll cut 45 minutes off the, off the trip. So he got, worked with uh, Governor Rosa, who was then, uh, Al Rosalini, who was then governor, and they got the funding for the Vernita Bridge and the uh, Hanford Highway. Uh, and then uh, the third project uh, that he said he called Project X. And uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, in, uh, in, in 1964, uh, President Johnson announced that they were going to shut down the plutonium reactors. We had more plutonium than we could ever use. Uh, and uh, so uh, the, the, Sam's uh, view and the rest of the business owner's view was that if they shut down the uh, plutonium reactors, every job in the city is going to go away. The place is going to dry up and, and blow away. Uh, and uh, so he said we've, he, had a, he had a project. And uh, in, 19, in 1962, Senator Magnuson was running for re-election, and he had a particularly tough race. And uh, Sam went to him and said, we need a federal building to convince the people that the federal government is not going to uh, abandon them uh, when and if they ever shut down the plutonium reactors, that the federal government will be here and care about them. And uh, so uh, he, uh, Magnuson said, Sam, do you know that a, a federal building takes 25 years to get appropriated and, and, and built? And Sam said, I, uh, I know, but I think you can do it. <laughs> well, in the middle of the campaign, Magnuson announced a, uh, an $8.7 million, seven-story tall federal building, uh, which uh, is still the largest building in the Tri-Cities until Cadillac's new medical tower gets mm -hmm. completed. Uh, and uh, so those were his first three big projects, and then, and then uh, uh, I think the he had a hand, he had a big hand in helping to bring Battelle uh, to uh, to the Tri Cities course now Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, uh, and he was involved in a whole lot of other major projects, diversification projects out at Hanford because when they shut down the reactors, they tried all kinds of other major projects to bring in and uh, most of them were unsuccessful. Uh, they spent an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money. Uh, a couple that did work were the N Reactor and, and, and uh, FFTF. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then of course they ran out of their useful life and, and uh, they were shut down. So he was then looking for other things. And the, the last major project that he was involved with was his favorite, and that's the uh, what is now the Open Test Hammer mm -hmm. training facility. Which uh, it was clear by that time that the cleanup was going to have to occur, and that uh, the labor unions needed to get involved in that and get on board. But they needed training, and uh, he had always he'd always been out working for the, the working man and wanted to get them. Uh, the kind of training that they needed, and he went out and worked with Norm Dix and Patty and others, and got the got the funding for Hammer. And I think I think he always uh, said that that was his most important and favorite project. Wow! So I want to know where we can find this book. And let me tell you, folks, that it's a total who's who in the Tri Cities in many of the years 
um, post-war, don't you think? Oh yeah, I, uh, we did. Uh, we did seventy-five interviews yeah. uh, with local community leaders and pe uh, elected public officials, uh, both former and and still serving in Washington D.C. and a lot of the lobbyists uh, that worked with Sam. So there's and, and they all had stories to tell. So the the book is a biography, but it, about Sam. But it's also a history of the of the Tri Cities from from 1960 uh, until his death in 2005. Uh, the books are the books available on my website at uh, uh, http uh, cmsauthor.com. It's also there's also a Facebook page called Community Godfather that you can look at, but it's also available through local independent booksellers uh, at Barnes and Noble, both in store and online, and online uh, at Amazon. So uh, uh, available at a lot of different places. So yeah, we can go and learn about more of the history of the Tri City. So here's what I want you to do. The last thing is I want you to read your favorite part of the book to us, if you would. Um, I think I think the basically the very end of the book. Uh, it's a quote by George Garlick, who many of your listeners will will know. Uh, George was a scientist, an educator, an entrepreneur who worked with Sam over many years. And this is from an interview that he, that he gave me, uh, talking about Sam. He was one of a kind. There was never a person I ever met who had more impact on a wide variety of areas. Whatever he was involved with uh, was always in the best interests of the community. A lot of people identified uh, him politically, but I don't identify him that way. He never had a political connection that wasn't targeted on how to help, uh, on how he was going to help the community. On the other hand, he was almost like the godfather, who was the enforcer. On the other hand, he was like the godfather, who was the father. Uh, each one of us have unlimited creativity and ability. Sometimes we think too small. Sometimes it's easy to second guess or intimate ourselves or intimidate ourselves about what we can accomplish. Sam was someone of small stature but infinite accomplishment. His legacy is the legacy of the human spirit. If someone like Sam can do the million, at least I should be able to do the thousand. His legacy is for those of us who follow, whether we say it or act it out, and who's, who are inspired to do more because they had some interaction with Sam Baldwin Test. Oh, Mark, that's really beautiful. Thank you. C. Mark Smith, the name of the book is Community Godfather, How Sam Volpentest Shaped the History of Hanford and the Tri-Cities. Thanks, Christine. Thanks for joining us. We're back in a moment.